All right, folks, we're back at it. Small time edition, the Patrick Gale Show, episode 19. We still were going strong, coach. They thought they were going to shut us down. We still going. It's perfect, coach. Episode 19, the week of Juneteenth. Ain't that <laughs> the, the ancestors, coach? The ancestors, it just, coach. Hey, hey that, that's what I'm talking about. And and it just works out when, when you got when you got your heart in the right place and you're following. You know, the Lord is going to work out for you, no matter what path you take. No doubt, Coach. And then, Coach, is summertime's rolling roll, roll on, Coach. You know, uh, this is this time of year, man, the, the people are still trying to find spots uh, for their young men and uh, trying to get find a home for coming. School starts in August. This is how fast things are going. We're literally eight weeks or so from school starting for a lot, for a lot of young men and still trying to find homes. So, Coach, think about that this time of year, trying to – so down in the rough who may be overlooked trying to help those young men uh, find a home that live the junior playing college basketball coming up here in, in August. You're, you're so right, um, JR. There's a lot of, lot of uh, class of 2024 uh, players available, but actually 2023 players are still available. Um, there's some older players that aren't in a transfer portal because they haven't found anything last year, you know, so they're kind of, in that kind of holding pattern of still going to school or, you know, maybe they're on some developmental teams or maybe they're on some Juco rosters or at, at a post-grad looking to go somewhere. So, you know, to the parents out there, I definitely am, am hearing a lot of your concerns. And my biggest thing is that the good thing is there are some with with opportunities there, there will come, you know, some people that will, you know, do the things for the right reasons to help, you know, uh, young people to help parents. And there are a couple of consulting, you know, uh, firms that I, I, I kind of advise and help, you know, when helping to place kids, you know, because they send a lot of emails out, but they're former coaches or they're, you know, former people in basketball that have great reputations that have their, the young people in, in the best interest. They're always going to send them to a right spot. They're always going to make sure it's the right fit. And, they're like you, Jr. They they reach out to coaches, and the coaches that respond, they continue that relationship. They do a good job of staying in touch. They do a good job of sending players. So and and they don't you know charge us coaches anything. They just try to help us, and you know they they place kids in our camp. They place kids you know on in our workouts. So you know big 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 time guys. So you know I would highly recommend parents to reach out you know, to, to these uh, consultants out there, just like with NIL, you have NIL agents that know what they're doing, that know not how to negotiate NIL. You got to have, you know, some people that know what they're doing and know how to help, you know, get their, their uh, young people some opportunities. No doubt, Coach. And that's the thing about it, getting scary about the white people is there, there are a lot of phonies out here and scam artists out here too. So going right. to the white people, to get That's your right. kid in the right situation. Because let's be honest, coach, fit means everything. You know, it means everything. You, you might can play, but you might not be the right fit for that team or program. So it's fit on many levels, fit, you know. And that's something that you have to really monitor as a parent and a young man when you're trying to place yourself. Because even if we talk about NBA draft and NFL draft, fit, a uh, fit models to your success. You know, I, I was going to say, I'm, I'm glad you, you just said what you said. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know, watched a lot of the interviews after the celebration, you know, of Boston winning. But I was talking to a coach yesterday um, that just got an opportunity to, to take over a program and he's excited. And he talked about what you just said in recruitment. And he said, you know, a lot of things just fit more so than even talent. So, when they interviewed uh, Coach Missoula, he talked about a lot of teams being close to winning, but the margins. And the reason why I listened to what he said is because he's a former D2 coach. You know, he's former D2 assistant, former G League coach. And he, he he's in a situation where he kind of saw from that ground level, from that Division II level, how important it is to go to the right place that you can thrive at what you do. So parents need to understand, I know everybody wants a full scholarship, but sometimes getting a full scholarship in the wrong program will cost you more. Sometimes investing in yourself. I talked to, you know, some young people yesterday when I went to go see them work out. And I talked about, you know, the workout was at seven in the morning. 
And I talked about how they've already made an investment. But if you want a big return, you got to make a bigger investment. So you played for two hours. You played in front of a college coach. Why don't you get in the weight room and continue building on that investment you made that morning? You know, doing that extra. That's how you get that big return. You're not going to get a full scholarship if you have incremental investments. If you want a big return of a full scholarship, I don't care what level, full scholarship is huge at any level, you got to put in big returns. So if you're not looking to acquire, you know, a consultant or an advisor, not a coach, that's a travel coach, you know, don't put it on the coaches. They've done their job because they've, they've got your son playing in front of college coaches. But sometimes it takes that consultant to say, you know what? Let me help your son because I've got great relationships with coaches that go way back. And that fit, they've already got, they've already vetted that fit that's going to be for your son. And I don't think parents understand doing that is going to help get a bigger return in the, in the long run. No doubt, coach. And, and you know, from doing this radio show, uh, as long as years I've done it, I know many coaches and I know how a lot of them are off the air. And I can direct a, a parent or a kid, be like, nah, based on my relationship with how he is, he wouldn't be a good fit. That's some things I do on the low that I only talk about because a lot of these coaches that these got parents are talking to, I know them on some level from being having on this show and been around them at, at, at AAU events and, or having to dinner with them off the record. And I can tell a parent or a kid from my relationship with the coach whether they'll be a good fit, fit for them or not. Like, I know who would fit for you versus another one of my friends who would not fit for them. You know, you know, it's just that honest to God truth. Like, you know, there are friends of mine in, in your conference that I, that I know that will work for you and I work for them or same in the MEAC or the SWAC. Like I know a kid that would fit well for maybe Blakeney, but not fit good for Rob Jones. They both my friends. But, but it's like, I just know that inherently based on knowing them. Right. That, hey, nah, you more fit for Kenny, you more fit for Rob, you know? And so it's just, it's just having that back and forth and understanding of who these people are and knowing how to steer a parent based on a relationship with the guys that's as genuine and true and say, hey, knowing what I know, it just wouldn't work. And both great coaches that you mentioned. And that's the thing that I don't think parents realize. There's a lot of great coaches out there that are very particular on what they want and what one coach, like you said, may want, may not be what another coach wants, but they're both great coaches. And there's enough uh, players out there that they can get what they want. The other thing I wanted to say, um, I, I, I've, because of what I do and because of the relationships I have, I get on guys a lot earlier than, you know, just the year that we're in or the, the year coming up. Like, for example, um, there's some seventh and eighth graders that are really, really good that I know about because of, you know, who they play for and who who their father is. You know, I know a lot of coaches that have kids that play. And they, they reach out to me, and they don't reach out to me when they're in high school. They reach out to me early. And what I realize is that when they have that support system, when they have really good coaches or a, a dad that is a coach that understands the process, they're ahead of a lot of kids that even are older than them now or kids that might be, you know, as talented. Like, you know, perfect example, you know, at, at our camp, there's a young man that, He's now getting, you know, well, not now, but he's getting high major opportunities and he's going to get more as, you know, the, the live period events uh, happen. But I knew him when he was in eighth grade and to see his growth, not just in basketball, but in his demeanor and how he carries himself. Well, y'all say the swagger like he's humble, but he knows he's pretty freaking good and he knows when he steps into a gym. But with that said, he'll still get with his coach about coming to our prospect camp. Why? Because he remembered us when we came to his gym, when nobody else was there, when he was in eighth grade going into high school, he remembers those things. And to me, some of these young people, 
have more character than some adults that I'm around because they feel like, oh, you know, we've got a player, you know, he's a division one player, but your humility says more than your talent sometimes. And sometimes I see 13 and 14 year olds that just because I'm a college coach, they're blown away that, wow, this coach is here to watch me work out. When you're young and you're you're innocent and you're naive, but then to see you got more and you you've gotten better and you've gotten bigger schools on you, but you're not gonna forget Albany State was in the gym to watch you work out because you're good with their coach, or sometimes you're just really good and cool with their coach, and the fact that they see that rapport that you have with their coach, oh, he must be a good guy. So. Coach, what's up with Albany State, Coach? Are they coming up to watch his practice again? You know, little things like that. That's why I like to go to practices and workouts. I'll go there more so than go to a big event because that's where you can really see a kid and how he reacts with his coach, and you really see the bond that they have with coaches. Nah, Coach, like it's funny you say that because Frankie Allen in Tennessee State told me as a 12-year-old, if he's still here, he'll give me a scholarship. I come to his wow. camp every year and he saw me get better and he knew I was a computer. I wasn't the best player on the court, but I could right. like heck. Right. I, I could shoot the ball. <laughs> the main thing, I can shoot the, the ball in the court. <laughs> and rebound the basketball and can compete. Like, like I said, I, I don't have the handles, but I can do everything else. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I can make the right pass. You know what I'm saying? So, and then it went from he got let, left Tennessee State, go to Richardson the third, and he was there for he had his incident. He told me the same thing. So this is what I had with that we're not gonna have, and also coach. I was a ball boy at the famous Kentucky Arkansas game at the Georgia Dome. It's the tournament game. I was a ball wow. boy in that game. So Patino and Nolan, wow. so, so Richardson remember his, just the father remember me from that. So right. So but like I said, having a rapport with Nolan Richardson the third. Uh, Frankie Allen, uh, heck, I want to, I want to coach side basketball camp at Tennessee State. So, so I know what you're saying. Going to camps, coach can put the eyes on you and know what you're about. They can say, okay, I've seen this young man. I know his character. I know his heart. I know what he's about. He's about the right things. We, 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 we can go somewhere with him. So I can speak to going to camps, even Bobby Freeman's camp. At Georgia Tech, you know, I can speak to the going to these camps, you know, literally after the drills at Georgia State. So being around coaches at a young age, because summertime coach keep me out of trouble. Coach McHenry had me That's in right. camps. <laughs> That's right. Whether it be in That's Atlanta right. where I found and, where and, I found and JR, you be you being modest, you being modest right now, JR. Uh uh coach JR has been speaking at some camps, you know. So so don't be modest, JR. You 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 shining the light on young people as well. I do my best, coach. You know, um, I do try to give them experiences from, you know, I have from, you know, doing what I do with you and uh from my father and other people. Cause uh, you know, as I said on the show previously, I do realize now, coach. All the coach not received and been around, <laughs> it comes out the right times. Coach, it's out. that's right, that's right. And it's gonna come out. It's just you know it, it has to come out in that good you know uh, environment to help others. And I was gonna say, I don't. You don't have to talk to because you know there's NCAA rules, but you don't have to talk to players to have a relationship because there's something called energy. So just in, for example, when I go to a workout, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And players see that. Players will take a peek while they are in a break in a, in, in a drill, and they see a coach that's in it and seeing, okay, I see why. And players see your energy. So all of a sudden, their energy pops up. Well, I look at everybody in the gym, and I want to see who's really listening to their coach, who's paying attention to the drill. And then when they play in any type of setting, three-on-three, three, four-on-four, five-on-five, who's translating that? What am I doing? I'm vetting them for me, and I'm vetting them for other coaches. So when a lot of coaches talk to me and 
you know, they say, well, you can't get that kid. Yeah, but you don't know who I know. You have no idea who I talk to about our kids. You don't know that when we when we talk to other coaches, we're not talking about he can dribble pass and shoot. We're talking about, man, he he stayed after the, the workout and was working on his weaknesses. Man, he didn't quit in any drills. I could tell he was dead tired, but he pushed himself. Those are the things that coaches talk about. Everybody can pick out talent, but can you can that talent come in and help you win? It's the little things and goes back to what I talked about. It's the margins. Most people are close to. I learned something uh, this week. A lot of the people will succeed in things and business ventures, whatever they do, just by continuing to push, just by not quitting. Because most people quit because it's too hard or they don't see them doing it. So they're like, man, I can't do this. Just by getting up the next day and doing it, you're that much closer to success. And I'm talking about anything, anything in life. And I don't think a lot of parents and young people realize that. Just the fact that at 7 a.m. you're up getting better. And getting better doesn't mean I'm out doing anything physical. Sometimes it's mental getting better. That will get you to closer to where you want more than anything. Coach, this radio show. It's a testament to hard work. This is only point. me. It's, it's me. Good point. I ain't got Good no point. help here. Good point. Hey, that's why they call you boss man. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. I, I mean, I could have quit this show years ago. But coach, I could have I could have quit a lot of things, coach. But you know, it's, it's funny. It's funny that you say that because when when I look at you and I look at what you do. All I think of is, you know what? I got to go on. I got to keep pushing. I got to keep working. I can't listen to, you know, the, the the negative talk. And I can't feel and absorb the negative energy. Again, same way I could talk about it being positive. Sometimes people, I can feel that they're negative and they don't want me to succeed just because they don't want me to succeed. It has nothing to do with anything other than I don't want him to succeed. That's why when when I'm, you know, with anybody, I'm always talking positive things because I want everybody to succeed. I have no problem watching somebody else succeed. And I think something like that is something that I want young people to understand. Your time will come. If you work hard, work that much harder. Your time will come. But sometimes that failure and it could be years of it. That failure, if you stay true to who you are and stay true to what the Lord has for you. That investment of failure will yield that huge return of success. And only people that have succeeded can say that. That's a lot of things that, that was being said also about the Celtics. Man, they, they you know, Drew Holiday was saying it. They got to understand, you just got to get through it and win it. Then you'll understand, you know, what I was talking about. You can't know it until you succeed. Coach, you know what's funny? And I laugh at it. And I heard, I heard this noise. How did JR get... Mike Woods on his show. How did he get? Exactly. How did exactly. he get himself on, on his show? How exactly. did he get Bill O'Brien on his show? Maybe because I exactly. Maybe because I I'm, people know I'm a real individual, and exactly. maybe Mike Woodson and I cross paths somewhere. Maybe who knows? But I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> years ago, like many years ago, because like you've Samson, always been around you know? it. He's at he's at Texas Southern down in Houston. Maybe I know Johnny Jones. Maybe he knows about me through Johnny Jones. You know, right. Bill right. O'Brien, football guy, NFL guy. So it's like when rather than say, "Hey, great job, Jr." It's always, "How did he do that?" Being who he is, because I present myself well. That's right. Even though, even though I do what I do, I'm myself. I said, "Present." I present this in a very professional manner and now when i reach out to people it's very professional and i just give them the archive if you the archive is the archive <laughs> you know what that's I'm right saying? <laughs> that's right and you know i talked to a coach a couple of days ago and you know he was talking to his his player and i just so happened to get you know somebody told me about his player so when i talked to the coach and i and i could talk to the player because he's 2025 20, so when i talked to coach and player you should see the, the kid's face. He had no idea that I'd be in the gym that day. And you should just see 
again, that innocence and that energy of, wow, it just so happened today that a coach is coming here to see me. And the coach had no idea I would be there either because another coach is the one that told me about this player. So, you know, I just I just want to encourage, you know, all of the, the, the prospects out there, no matter what where you are in your position, keep pushing, keep working. But most importantly, give that investment. If you want a big return, make your investment bigger. Don't listen to people tell you not to. Only talk to people that have been successful. Only talk to people. If you want to go somewhere in anything, in any profession, talk to people that have been there and done that. Talk to people that have won. I don't care what level you've won at. As you can see, it was just shown. If you went at the D2 level, if you went at the NAI level, if you went at the high school level, you went to JUCO level, you are a winner. You can win anywhere because you know the blueprint. And you may go through years of, of, of starvation, but... The winners understand that's when you get your biggest test. Trust me, if 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 I didn't know what winning looks like, there's a lot of things I would have done differently, JR, but I know what winning looks like. I understand. So even when you're losing, you gain. Case in point, this show. You talked about your radio show. Case in point, this show. You know, uh, you, you, you know that, wait a second, this guy, there's something about this guy, or there's something about this program. You know, so that's what, you know, gets me to push every day, no matter what environment I'm in, because I know I just got to make a bigger investment. Case in point, let me make this investment in in, in a guy called J.R. Bossman and look at where it's leading to me now. You know, and I know when the winning comes that I'm used to that and I was expecting that. But the lesson learned that's the biggest thing that I have to make sure that I understand and learn to get to that next level. And there's always a lesson in, in winning and losing. There's always a lesson. And I didn't judge you by your record, coach. Well, you should have, JR, because at the end of the day, no, I, seriously, people people need to hear this. At the end of the day, that's that's our resume. So you should have. But at the end of the day, continue to judge me. You understand what I mean? Like, see... When when you see somebody's true character, it's not when he, he's on top of the world. When you see somebody's true character, it's when everything's going against them. And trust me, Jr. I work very hard and I pray very hard, and that's why I read the Bible. You know, Lamentations five. It's funny we're talking about this. I'm really in the desert right now, but I'm the same person and I'm doing the same things as when everything was going great. Well, Coach Orwell, because me, man, I coach. understand, because I understand that this is the test of who I truly am right now. Now, well, I'm, what I mean by that, Coach, is this, Coach. A lot of guys wouldn't even talk to you unless you had a winning record. I, that's I, why I said you. That, that, that was my nice way of saying you should have, because I know this. But, 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 and it, a lot but, of people talk. And, and Jr. A lot of people are saying things that they wouldn't say without that. But I have to take that. So God bless them. But, but, you know what, God bless him. but a lot of hosts would, would, would shy away from you or when I reached out to you last year. I've told coaches this. I don't care what your record is. I, I, I can make it sound good for you. <laughs> well, JR, let me ask you a question. Since since we're going to de delve into that, why is that? What 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 is your reasoning to, instead of just re reaching out to the big time and the winning coaches, why are you talking to a Patrick Gale? Because you're an HBCU school and I know you don't get any coverage. And it's always not about the record. I know intimately that a lot of times the record, there's stuff that goes on to it that don't really meet the eye or the, or the mainstream per se. And plus, I feel like every guy needs opportunity. That's why I'll say any coach has a losing record. We'll talk in, if you feel comfortable in the summertime, we'll do that. Because you need to still get your name out there. Right. Because some right. guys are very record wary. I get that. Yeah. Let's do it some time. Yeah. We're zero zero then. You know? But but JR, it's the business that we're in, but I'm big on process. See, a lot here's a funny thing. And and the only reason I'm using the Celtics because I think it's the best example that people can relate to. Three years ago, two years ago, last year, all everybody wanted to talk about is their failures. And they knew within that locker room, it's we're building. And we just got to tweak this. We just got to change that. But we're building. 
And even today, I heard a coach tell me, man, it's like the bubble championship. And I'm like, tell you ain't used to winning because you just beat whoever's in front of you. I don't care what they put in front of me. I got to beat them to win a championship. You know, it, it, nobody comes in and says, OK, well, we're going to have this team hurt. No, 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 no. Everybody, what you just said, zero, zero from start to finish. Who's the best? So they 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 expected to do what they did, no matter what the situation. Now, going forward, they've done it. Now you're going to see they're going to be the same guys that they were at the start when they were starving to win that. They are now that they have one because of the process. It's all about the process. No doubt, Coach. I'm going to tell you something. You took a bit of one of your previous points about winning. I, for me, it was fourth grade with Coach McHenry. We went 11 and 0. Fourth grade, he coached us. He, it was his second job. He wanted to <laughs> coach me my fourth grade year. And that year, Coach, I still got it. I remember I had average 13 points for a fourth grade team. <laughs> you know? what, wait, man, you can't just say that, man. Where'd you play at? What team did you play at, man? It was in the, it was in the Wild League that my dad coached in. Okay. You know, okay. we, we, we was the uh, Atlanta Magic. <laughs> Atlanta Magic. So In, in the Y, where, 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 where was this Y at, JR? Tell the people, man. Tell the people. West Side. West Side. That's you know, why I want that. So thank you. There's some kids down there in the West Side that, that, that whoa, whoa, I know that YMCA. Thank you. You That's know, where but, I got my start, East East Memphis YMCA. And if you're from Memphis, you know about East Memphis. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, 240. It's 240, baby. <laughs> pop up. East, East, pop up. Yeah, there you go. East Memphis YMCA. I'm a I'm a New Yorker. And if you know anything about New Yorkers, we're everywhere. So I, I got my start. I got my start coaching East Memphis YMCA. That's Winchester right. Winchester Road. Shout out Winchester Road, baby. Tax <laughs> cross. Where are you in the building? Hey, hey, let me tell you something about Memphis. It's another Brooklyn. Yes. Yes, it is. Basketball there. It, 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 they are some ball players in Memphis. Some tough, really talented kids coming out of Memphis, Tennessee. But nah, coach, that was a hell of a run on that Wiley. Level and old coach to a championship. It was a good thing, coach. So I learned winning at nine years old, coach. Winning big time winning. <laughs> you know? And what and what was the best what was the biggest lesson that Coach McHenry and you what Coach McHenry got into your team that you that you take to this day? Man, just come out, come out with the right mindset. Like he he Coach McHenry was going for a quick timeout. If we wasn't running our zone the right way, we wasn't playing our man to man the right way, or we was loafing, it'll be a from the game. Time out. What do we just go over in the huddle? <laughs> we gotta stay locked in on, on the game plan. You know what y'all have to do. And even as fourth grade as coach, he talked about shot maturity. He was talking- when you were in fourth grade, you remember that shot maturity. Yes. Wow, he, he coached us like we were high high level kids. He he was he was he he said I'm not, I'm not going to dumb the game down for you. That's right. That's if you're right. Go, if you're and those are the best father, coaches. If you go go, I'm going to teach you how to talk at the high levels. And those are the best coaches that 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 focus on the little things. The best players and the best coaches are worried about the little things, the things that you that most people take for granted. Well, how much sleep are you getting? What are you eating? What 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 are you working on in this workout that's going to translate to you getting a basket when everybody knows that you have to get a basket? You know, the little things. Shot maturity. That's efficiency. He was talking to you about analytics way before analytics was popular, JR. When he's when you talk about shot maturity. Yes. And, and coach, I saw <laughs> where the point guard, I was the back line. So coach. I used to love the, the, the transition rundown block shot. And the referees couldn't, couldn't, couldn't call it the right way. They could really, it had to be a foul. No, it was all ball. Okay. So I would love to chase down the ball, coach, and time it just right. Foul! Foul! Oh, it was all ball. Jabroni, what's wrong with you? Then my dad hey. put off on the referee. About, he got all the GD ball, you stupid. <laughs> 
but 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 you know what's funny that that same those same lessons i'm sure translate to what you do every day yes Yeah, because I'm on sprint for that, hustle for that. You know what I'm saying, Coach? Like, I took pride to be in the back line. So, they got in transition. I, I can outrun you. I, I can catch up with my speed and block your shot. And time it up, guess where I can smack it? Somewhere for you. That's a, that's a great feeling, ain't it? Love that feeling. <laughs> Loved it, Coach. <laughs> but the referee is what I think it's a foul. But no, it's, a, it's ball. I know it looks bad. The kid flailed. But, 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 but exactly. That's what I was about to say. But it didn't stop you from doing it every time you got an opportunity, right? He said, do it again. <laughs> but that, but that, but that's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes it's unfair. Sometimes people don't know, but you just got to keep doing what you're doing, especially if you know what you're doing is the right thing. And that'll be the last word right there because that's a good last word there, coach. It's a good last word right there. <laughs> episode 19. <laughs> It's a good last word for some folks. Episode 19, Patrick Gale show is in the books again. We're catching down the road with a milestone episode, episode 20. Who would thought Coach made the 20, Coach? But we're we, we going to make it, Coach. Well, That's wait. a milestone, JR. That's a milestone, man. That's a milestone. So, so folks, Coach Gale and I will talk to you down the road. We are out.